So now we're going to learn about the process of antibody-mediated immunity or humoral immune response followed with cell-mediated immunity that involve in our third line of defense. B and T cells are activated when they bind to antigen via antigen receptors, which are referring to B cell receptor and T cell receptor. Once activated, these cells will undergo multiple cell divisions or mitosis. The activated B and T cell will proliferate into two types of clones, which is a population of cells that are identical to the original cells. The two types of clones are effector cells and memory cells. Clonal selection is a process by which encounter with antigen will select which lymphocytes that will divide to produce a clone of cells specific for a particular epitopes. This table shows the two types of clones of cells that produce after proliferation of lymphocytes, which are the B and T cells due to their activation. The two types of clones are effector cells and memory cells. Effector cells is a short-lived cells. It takes effect immediately against the antigen or any pathogen that producing it. The effector cells for B cells are plasma cell. while the effector cells for T cells are T cytotoxic cell and T helper cell. Memory cell is a long-lived cell. It can give rise to effector cell if the same antigen reinfect later in the animal's life. The memory cells for B cells are memory B cell. And the memory cells for the T cells are either memory T cytotoxic cells or memory T helper cell. Effector cells respond immediately to the antigen during the first exposure, while memory cells rapidly activated upon second exposure to the same antigen. The production of effector cells represents the primary immune response, while the production of memory cells represent the secondary immune response. This table shows the difference between primary immune response and secondary immune response. The first exposure to some particular pathogen will stimulate a primary immune response by our immune system. Let's take antibody-mediated immunity as an example. We know that during antibody-mediated immunity, they will produce antibody to finally neutralize or destroy the antigen. The production of antibody during primary immune response is slower it might be produced after 3 or 4 days after initial exposure to the antigen and it reaches the concentration of the antibody might reach its peak about 10 to 7 days after the initial exposure to the antigen. A second exposure to the same antigen even years later will produce secondary immune response. The production of antibody is faster and it reaches its peak about 2 or 7 days after subsequent exposure to the same antigen. During primary immune response, the response is slower. This is due to, the body, to our body immune system never encountered the antigen before. Our immune system needs time to take into effect to recognize the antigen and to choose appropriate lymphocyte to be cloned. This is different with secondary immune response. The response is faster due to the presence of memory cell that is produced during primary immune response. The memory cells carries with it a copy of antibody that will act on the same antigen that activate them earlier during primary immune response. So when secondary immune response occurs, the memory cells will be activated into effector cells. 
so the effector cells will produce antibody faster than the primary immune response. This graph shows the antibody concentration versus time that occurs during antibody mediated immunity. Based on this graph, it shows that the body is infected towards two types of antigen, antigen X and antigen Y. Antigen X first infect the body at day one. During this time, there are no antibody produced. Primary immune response starts to kick in. Antibody is firstly produced after seven days of infection and the concentration of antibody reaches its peak after 16 or 17 days after infection. After reaching its peak, the antibody concentration decreases. This shows that our body is actually winning. The antibody bind to antigens and label them for destruction. What happens when the body is reinfected by the same pathogen, in this case, antigen X? In this case, the immune system will trigger a secondary immune response. It is going to be a big difference compared to the primary immune response due to the presence of memory B cell and memory T cells. Following the first infection during the primary immune response, the immune system will produce not only effector cells but also memory cells. Memory cells, for example memory B cells, will carry it with it a copy of antibody that is specific to antigen X. The secondary immune response will be much will be much more rapid. And in addition, the concentration of antibody that is produced during secondary immune response is higher as compared to the antibody concentration that is produced during primary immune response. This graph shows the primary immune response that was made to the newly encountered antigen Y. And the cycle repeats again if, let's say, antigen Y infected the body for the second time. A type of T cell called the T helper cells would trigger both the antibody mediated immunity and also the cell mediated immunity. The T cell themselves will not carry out those responses. Instead, the signals from the T helper cells will initiate the production of antibodies from the plasma cells that differentiated from the B cells and also will activate the T cytotoxic cell that we're going to kill infected cells. Two requirements must be met for a T helper cells for it to activate the adaptive immune responses. First, a foreign molecule must be presented that can bind specifically to the antigen receptor of the T cell. In this case, the antigen receptor is called the T cell receptor. Second, this uh, antigen must be displayed on the surface of an antigen presenting cell. The antigen presenting cell can be dendritic cell, macrophage, or B cells. And we have to know that uh, when a whole cells are infected, they will also displace antigen on their surface. So what then will distinguish an antigen pre presenting cell? So the answer lies in the existence of the two classes of MHC molecules that we have discussed earlier. Most body cells have only class 1 MHC molecules. But the antigen presenting cells, the three antigen pre uh, presenting cells, both have, uh, they have class 2 MHC molecule. Based on this figure, this APC will ingest the pathogen. The pathogen will be break down into antigen fragment. The antigen fragment will then bind to class 2 MHC molecules, forming antigen MHC complex. The antigen MHC complex will be presented on the cell membrane of this APC via antigen presentation. The T helper cells will recognize the antigen MHC complex and bind to it via a T cell receptor. The binding will trigger the APC to release a chemical or cytokines to the T helper cells. The T helper cells then will release its own cytokines for itself and then it will be activated. What happens when it being activated? The T helper cells will undergo multiple cell division and forming a clone of activated T helper cells.
the T help the activated T helper cells will then help stimulate T cytotoxic cell in cell mediated immunity and B cells in antibody mediated immunity that we are going to discuss later in this chapter.